probably one of the the, the worst areas in North America uh, in many ways, yet some of the people that live there love it. People have a lot of pride in the area. There's also people that uh, are there who have nowhere else to go. It's an area that Vancouver has been trying to clean up for, for many years. Uh, decades and decades ago, it was just called Skid Row. It's always been an area which has been rough and tumble. Uh, it's always been an area that uh, has been close to industry, uh, and industry has changed in Vancouver. Toronto Bai is a very talented boxer who lost his way essentially. Uh, I mean, a product of the streets of the downtown east side of Vancouver. Geronimo was uh, someone who could have been the Manny Pacquiao before we even had a Manny Pacquiao. Someone who uh, could have taken the boxing world by storm. You know, here was uh, Geronimo Bai who uh, had a God-given talent, uh, who honed it on the downtown east side, and of course that's where things went wrong. But he was someone that could have been a great international star. Well, in uh, 2010, I worked with uh, Steve Buffery as well as the other uh, writers from the, the Toronto Sun chain who uh, came to Vancouver as part of the team that covered the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics. Uh, Steve uh, came back the next year because uh, the Vancouver Whitecaps were launching in Major League Soccer. Toronto FC was the first uh, opposition and uh, Steve was in town early and uh, Steve wanted to go and look for Geronimo Bay in the downtown east side of Vancouver because uh, he'd heard so many different rumors about where Geronimo ended up. And Steve had actually covered uh, the Canadian boxing team uh, from years gone by, from years previous at other big events, and had known about a lot of the problems of some of the, uh, the athletes who had risen through the ranks, who had come from very tough backgrounds from across Canada, and they found their niche in boxing, and that's what happened to Geronimo Bay. He found his niche in boxing, but he also had so many problems that he was able to overcome. Of all the skill on that team, he was the guy that everybody thought, if this kid ever harnesses his skill, he could be a world pro, you know, like a, a world professional champion. And uh, to me, that's why it made the story so compelling, is because he wasn't just some average fly-by-night national team boxer who, you know, would you know once in a while would make a quarterfinal or something. He was something special, and a lot of guys on that team and a lot of coaches and stuff thought he would. Uh, He'd be huge, you know? It's unfortunate what happened. Well, I was given the Olympic beat at our paper about, uh, probably about 1995, and I covered Olympic sports as a beat for 15 years. And so I would go to all the major games, Olympics, Pan Ams, Commonwealth Games, and I always gravitated towards the boxing team because I love boxing. Did a little bit myself, also wrestled. And I just found boxers the most genuine athletes. You know, a lot of them have amazing stories to tell. Frankly, a lot of them come from the wrong side of the tracks, as we say. Because, you know, if you're like a multimillionaire, the last sport you're probably going to put little Johnny in is boxing, right? But these guys are all awesome. And I find boxing teams really reflect Canada a lot because you've got a real diverse cross section of athletes, you know? Like you cover swimming, it's basically all rich white kids. I shouldn't. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but you know what I mean? Boxers are all, and boxers, the boxing team always came from all over the country, you know. East Coast guys, a lot of Toronto guys, you know, Niagara Falls guys like Mike Strange, guys from BC like Geronimo. Well, Geronimo first came to know who he was at the 1990 Commonwealth Games in Auckland, New Zealand. That was the first major games I covered. I got to know Geronimo as a, a kid who was, 
you know, just like a shiny button is a good nickname for him, as his coach called him, and a really talented fighter. I was like one of these guys on the national team who thought that this kid is going to be Canada Sugar Ray Leonard. And, you know, as he stopped making the national teams over the next few years, I sort of lost track with him. And uh, I didn't know he even turned pro. He only had like two pro fights. But, and then the next thing I heard is when I went to visit Mike in Niagara Falls at his pub. And he, he told me about what he had heard about Toronto. And I thought at that time, wow, well, I mean, what a compelling story. Hopefully he's still alive and I'm going to write about him. And then it just dawned on me that not only was Geronimo sort of missing and apparently taking drugs, so many of the guys I had covered over the years were either dead from suicide or drug overdoses, so that I sort of incorporated that with the Geronimo by story. Mike Strange is like a three-time Olympian. He was the net captain of the national team for a number of years. He was a boxer who, he made the, he made the semifinals in Atlanta and he got robbed of a decision. He, he was one win away from winning a medal at the Olympics in 96 and he got robbed. And he was a kind of boxer, was he was a defensive specialist, and he really took advantage of the way amateur boxing is scored. That's how I found out about uh, uh, Geronimo, was I was down in Niagara Falls visiting Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker at the fourth annual Niagara Sport Commission Awards Breakfast is Mr. Mike Strange. Turn negatives into positives. And the thing is, life isn't fair. And everybody in this room obviously is going to go through something where you're going to get laid off and you shouldn't have. You get fired for some reason you shouldn't have. Uh, you know, I, I would say, you know, something might happen at the Olympics or in a sporting event where you should have won and, and it was taken away from you. Um, you know, you could be up 4-1, you know, going in the playoffs, 10 minutes left and lose in overtime. That was the Toronto Maple Leafs against the Boston Bruins a few years ago. That was for you, Marty Calder. Yeah, everybody remembers that. I'm a Habs fan, so I'm okay, but... Steve Buffery it was a uh, huge boxing analyst for uh, uh, the Toronto Sun. So uh, a, a former uh, teammate of mine, John Smokey Stevenson, and he was doing a, a kind of a tour with his uh, wife at the time, and he was going through west to east, and he came to Niagara Falls to visit me at my bar, and so we just kind of talking about different names, who are here, who's not. And he goes, oh, did you hear Geronimo Bai passed away? I'm like, oh my God, I had no idea. He's like, oh yeah, it was something to do, he OD'd or something. Nobody, wasn't sh nobody was sure. T you know, total shock. And I ended up talking to Steve Buffery a few days later. And I, I was telling Steve about it. He's like, no way. And I said, yeah. I said, I, I don't know if it's rumors. Because I heard s some people said they saw him. So s Steve wanted to do basically an article um, about uh, you know, people who have, who have passed away on the team and, and because of drugs or not making the Olympics and, and stuff like that. So he did this article and there was about three or four boxers that had died um, because of overdoses, um, suicide. Uh, there was a few and results because they didn't make the Olympic team. And I think it's uh, quite a shock to someone who should be at the Olympics and because of whatever it may happen, they might have uh, lost or weren't in shape or got ripped off on a decision or whatever it may be, didn't make the Olympics. And you see the effect of not making the Olympics on their life. And there was three or four boxers in that article that Toronto, that uh, Steve Buffery from the Toronto Sun wrote about. And um, one of them was Geronimo. How I met Geronimo, well, I, I actually boxed him in the Nationals um, back in uh, 1989. And I boxed him in Burnaby and I made it to the finals and lost to Geronimo actually at, in the Bantamweight division. Uh, split decision, it was, it was a very close fight. And uh, so after that there was box off. So you had to go through kind of, uh, he was the champion. So you had to go box the other boxers that competed in that tournament and you'd have to beat them to, to go have a chance to compete against Geronimo again. So when I, uh, I boxed the box from Quebec, 
beat him, and then I, I made it to uh, to Geronimo, basically. But I the, the challenger has to beat the champion twice, so I ended up uh, beating Geronimo in Winnipeg twice. Um, and then the following year, I moved up in weight uh, to featherweight, and Geronimo stayed at that weight, and we both uh, won the nationals. And um, we competed on the same team for a, a full year, and uh, it was awesome. But he was uh, um, a partier. I roomed with him a couple times, too. and. Uh, we go to the Commonwealth Games, uh, Geronimo did really well, he made it to the finals and uh, won a silver medal for Canada, one of his first international, major international tournaments. So Geronimo was, was great um, to be second, silver medal and won a big competition like that was amazing. He was a slick boxer, he was made for the amateurs. He could put combinations together really lovely, good defensive fighter like Mike Strange was. He probably had more offense than Mike and Mike was a above average world amateur fighter. He was the type of fighter, he was kind of a professional fighter, so he would be like, you know, he, he, he kind of had to jab and be like this, kind of, and then all of a sudden he would just like, like and he'd slip in a right hand and he wouldn't even know where it's coming from. And uh, yeah, really, really sneaky, sneaky right hand, and he'd just be jabbing with that jab and jab and jab, and, you know, and just be almost making the guy fall asleep, kind of, and he'd be fast, and he's dodging punches all the time, and then he'd just like, get a right hand, and he was so quick. That uh, a lot of people didn't see it. He was just uh, a really, really smooth fighter. Quick footwork, hand speed, and uh, he, he had uh, he had all the talent. You know, he uh, he was a, a complete fighter. He really was. Um, just the stuff outside the ring didn't help him uh, become a complete fighter, unfortunately. Whether he had whether he could have been a great pro, even if he stayed on the straight and narrow, we don't know. But from what I had remembered of him. If he had gotten a good coach in the pros and you know was disciplined, I think he could have gotten really far. I could see him at least fighting for a world professional title, at least. Bantamweight Geronimo Bai had an eye for gold and with a combination of speed, power and tenacity seemed destined to find it. But like four of his teammates, the battling little brawler from BC headed home with silver.